In the previous video, we used a simple example to calculate the fee growth below. And we assumed that the fee growth started below a tick. In this example, we let the fee growth zigzag through some tick i. And when we did that, we found out that f of b will be equal to these numbers. You can observe here that there is some kind of pattern to how phi growth below fb changes. So in this video from this example, we'll derive an equation for f of b and also come up with an algorithm that will track f of b. Let's start with a review of the notations. We'll define f of g of k to be equal to phi growth of token y at time tk. And we'll assume that t of k is increasing. So t of k is less than t of k plus 1, and t of k plus 1 will be less than t of k plus 2, and so on. We will define f of b to be equal to the fee growth of token y below tick i. What f of b represents is the total height of these red rectangles. With this in mind, we will first derive an equation for f of b. On the left is a table of what f of b is at different times. And on the right is an example of how the fee growth zigzags through some tick i. Let's define f of o of n to be equal to the absolute value and then take the sum of either plus or minus 1 multiplied by f of g of k. What this equation is describing are the terms that I've highlighted in purple box. f of o of 0 will be this term, f of o of 1 will be these two terms, f of o of 2 will be these three terms, and so on. Now, let's rewrite f of b in terms of f of o of n. So let's start with f of o of 0. So when we evaluate f of o of n for n equal to 0, we get f of g of 0. Okay, next, let's rewrite this term in terms of f of o of 1. Well, f of o of 1 will be f of g of 0 minus f of g of 1. However, we will need to take the absolute value. Since f of g of 1 is greater than or equal to f of g of 0, this is because phi growth will always be increasing. So these two terms will be negative. So to make it positive, we will need to add a minus sign. And then we have an extra f of g here. So to write f of b in terms of f of o, this will be equal to minus f of o of 1 plus f of g. f of b at time t2 will evaluate f of o of n and replace n with 2. So these terms will be equal to f of o of 2. Next, let's evaluate f of b for time t3. First, let's replace these terms with f of o of n, where n will be equal to 3. So if you expand these terms for n equals to 3, we'll get these terms. However, again, this f of o of n has an absolute value, meaning that this will always be greater than or equal to 0. So for here, we might need to put a minus sign if these terms are negative. So let's check. Well, we know that f of g of 1 is greater than or equal to f of g of 0. Again, this is because phi growth is always increasing. And the same goes here. f of g of 3 is greater than or equal to f of g of 2. So these two terms are either negative or zero, and these two terms are also negative or zero. So this means that these terms will always be less than or equal to zero. So to these terms, we add a negative to f of o of 3. And then we have an extra f of g. So we add a f of g. Okay, lastly, let's write f of b for time t4. Let's replace this in terms of f of o. Well, this is just simply f of o of n, for n equals 4. And we can also check that these terms add up to be either 0 or a positive number. The way you can check this is that we know that f of g of 4 is greater than or equal to f of g of 3, and we know that f of g of 2 is greater than or equal to f of g of 1. And we also know that f of g of 0 is greater than or equal to 0. So when we add these two terms up, this will be greater than or equal to 0. When we add these two terms up, f of g of 2 and f of g of 1, then we know that this is also greater than or equal to 0. And we also know that f of g of 0 is greater than or equal to 0. All of these terms, when we add it up, will be greater than or equal to 0. So f of b at time t4 will simply be equal to f o of 4. Now that we rewrote f of b in terms of f of o, we can come up with a simple equation for f of b. Let's derive a simple equation for f of b in terms of f of o and f of g. Let's define i of c to be equal to the current tick at time t, where t will be between t of k and t of k plus 1. Okay, and let's come up with an equation for f of b in terms of f of o and f of g. So, scrolling back up, let's examine what f of b is equal to when the current tick i of c is to the right of tick i. So, we have our tick i over here, 
and the current tick IFC will be to the right, somewhere over here. In this case, what is the value of f of v? Well, let's start here. At time t0, the phi growth crosses over to the right, and between time t0 and t1, the current tick will be over here. In this case, what is the value of f of b? Well, we know that f of b will be equal to f of o0. And the same goes for over here. Between the time t2 and t3, current tick i of c will be to the right of tick i. Current tick will be somewhere over here. And what is the value of f of b when the current tick is on this side, on the right side of tick i? Well, we can see from this table that f of b will be equal to f o of 2. And this is the same for time t equals to t4. After time t4, we know that the current tick will be to the right of tick i. This is over here. Current tick will be somewhere over here. In this case, f of b will be equal to f o of 4. What we observe here is that when the current tick i of c is to the right of tick i, then f of b will be simply be equal to one of these terms, f of o of 0, f of o of 2, or f of o of 4. On the other hand, when the current tick i of c is to the left of tick i, so the current tick will be either be here, here, or here, then fb will be equal to this term for time between t1 and t2, and you can see this over here. At time t1, tick crosses over to the left, and at time t2, the tick crosses over to the right. So in between t1 and t2, we'll have f of b be equal to these terms. Likewise, between time t3 and t4, the current tick will be somewhere over here. And when the current tick is somewhere over here, f of b will evaluate to this expression. Let's write this pattern down into a general equation. When the current tick i of c was to the right of tick i, we saw that f of b was equal to f of o of k. And when the current tick was to the left of tick i, we saw that f of b was equal to f of g minus f of o of k. So this is the equation for f of b in terms of f of o and f of g. Next, we'll turn this equation into an algorithm that tracks f of o. Let's find the algorithm to track f of o of n. Here I've listed f of o of 0, 1, 2, and 3. When you expand the terms, here they are. Next, I'm going to rearrange these terms. Next, let's try to find how we will go from f of o of 0 to f of o of 1, and from f of o of 1 to f of o of 2, and from f of o of 2 to f of o of 3. What do we need to do to this term to get to these terms? And what do we need to do to these terms to get to these terms? And finally, what do we need to do to these terms to get to these terms? So let's start from here. To go from f of g of 0 to f of g of 1 minus f of g 0, what we'll need to do is minus f of o of 0 and then add f of g of 1. If we minus f of o of 0, we'll get minus of this. So we have minus f of g of 0. And to this, we will need to add f of g of 1. That's how we will get from f of o of 0 to f of o of 1. Okay, how about from f of o of 1 to f of o of 2? Well, again, to get from f of o of 1 to f of o of 2, what we'll need to do is take f of g of 2 minus f of o of 1. So here is f of o of 1, and we minus all the terms, so we'll have minus f of g of 1, minus minus will become a plus, so we have plus f of g of 0. And to these terms, we will add f of g of 2. So that's how you get f of o of 2. How about from here to here? What do we need to do? Well, again, what we need to do is add a minus to f of o of 2, and then add f of g 3. Here's f of g of 3. And here are the terms for f of o of 2 multiplied by minus 1. So as you can see from here, the way to get to f of o of n plus 1 is to take f of g of n plus 1 and then minus f of o of n. And we're now ready to come up with an algorithm for f of o of n. For the algorithm that will track f of o of n, we will assume that the current tick i of c is less than or equal to tick i. And we'll initialize a variable that's called f out to be equal to f g. And then we'll update f out to be equal to f g minus f out when fg crosses tick i. So what you're seeing over here is this equation. 
And this is the algorithm that we'll be using to track f o of n. So in this video, we derived the algorithm that will track f o of n, and we also came up with an equation for f of b. In the next video, we'll do the same for f of a, which tracks the fee growth above tick i.